Welcome to Gracefully Graying. I am co-founder Lori Bloom, explore a platform of tips, trends, news, and informative discussions for you and your loved ones. Uh, whether you're 50 and over or way over, find us on gracefullygraying.com, YouTube, and social media. Enjoy this live stream discussion. Welcome to Gracefully Graying. I'm your host, co-founder and attorney, Henry Gornvine. Today on Gracefully Graying, we are very pleased to welcome as our guest, Marnie Stone of the Rochester Center for Behavioral Medicine, as she discussed some of the issues with regard to intimacy, couples, and especially long-term relationships as we're getting older. Marnie, welcome. Hi, Henry. Thank you so much for having me. I'm pleased to be here. We're really pleased to have you. First of all, why don't you tell our viewers a little bit about who you are and your background? Okay, currently I'm a licensed clinical social worker practicing at Rochester Center for Behavioral Medicine, where I'm mostly seeing couples on Zoom. So uh, telehealth is uh, up and running and doesn't look like it's changing anytime soon. I have a background in psychology, a BA from the University of Michigan, an MSW from the University of Michigan, and a, a pretty extensive background in the field of health and fitness. Uh, I stopped practicing social work soon after my children were born and went into fitness at that point and personal training. and. Uh, at one point I was working with a client and we were talking about her weight and um, looking at her in the mirror and stuff. And all of a sudden it hit me that, you know, I was much more interested in knowing about her on the inside than focusing so much on her outside. So at that point I decided to get back to social work. I re-upped my license and uh, started to take some trainings. I was very interested in couples counseling. So took a couple extensive couples counseling trainings, and I see several couples at RCBM. Marty, what counseling do you give in a long-term marriage where a couple is reaching retirement age and perhaps no longer have the same goals? I've had many cases over the years in my family law practice, especially with what we call the gray divorce, where people are in their 50s, 60s, perhaps been married for 30, 40 years, and suddenly they find the children are gone, uh, maybe the dog dies, and they have no, nothing in common. So where do you go from there? Well, any kind of counseling uh, when you're dealing with two people tends to be similar, right? We're dealing with communication. We're dealing with intimacy. We're dealing with conflict resolution. However, in an aging couple, it's... Um, can be much more complicated, right? Blended families, um, different health issues, different uh, retirement plans. For instance, I work with somebody um, and he wants to be in Florida for the winter and she does not. So I kind of look at that as there really are no rules. What works for the couple? As long as there's clear and open communication, right? They can discuss, you know, I'd like to be there for three months and you stay in Michigan. And, you know, so people organize their lives sometimes a little bit more separately. Um, but the importance is to really understand your partner's inner world, right? What they view as important and meaningful to them. Sometimes it coincides with how you may feel and other times it might be different. And so to honor and respect each other's wants, desires, and needs, even if it means spending some time apart if necessary. Um, but really, the, the key to that happening smoothly is just open, clear communication, respectful, and an interest and um, a desire to be empathetic. Your partner's important to you, right? So you want to, just as you want to your want to honor your own wants, needs, and desires. We also need to make space for our partners. And many times that might take people in later life temporarily away from each other. For instance, you know, somebody might be visiting kids for a month in another state and, and their partner doesn't want to join. So it's nuances like that that are a little cumbersome, but they're workable. Sounds good. I mean, the key is communication. I think another key really kind of is 
compromise and perhaps elasticity to keep something going and perhaps rekindle a spark Absolutely. in a long-term relationship. Mm -hmm. Marty, what about issues involving blended families with adult children and grandchildren? I found that uh, in my practice, especially that second marriages and third marriages often have a higher failure rate and often it's because of trying to blend and trying to get along with stepchildren and grandchildren. And these are all difficult scenarios. So give us your take on some of those issues. Okay. So I'm picturing a garden, right, that's growing beautifully with sunflowers. And then somebody comes and plants some daisies and somebody else comes and plants some tulips, right? So we're sort of making room for more... Um, interests, more people essentially. And with that certainly brings um, more individual wants, needs, and desires. But the garden, if it's tended to, can continue to grow without one plant growing over the other, right? So again, communication, um, discussing priorities and loyalties, and often, you know, there's issues with finances, um, Sometimes there's issues with family gatherings, right? So deciding ahead of time on odd years, we'll have Thanksgiving with your kids, even years, my kids, something to that degree. Or, you know, if you want to visit your um, son and daughter in Colorado, I'm going to go visit my kids in Missouri. So just, again, compromising, honoring and respecting each other's um, interests, and, and um, allowing space for that, right? Just like a garden, allowing for more, more flowers. Great, great analogy. I love it. Marnie, what about late in life marriages? And more and more people, especially in their 70s and 80s, when they've lost a spouse, especially through death, they'll get into relationships, but they don't necessarily remarry. They may live together. And so give us some thoughts on those issues as well. Well, certainly um, I've heard it said that we use our first or perhaps first and second marriage to sort of figure out what we do want. And by the time we're later in life entering maybe a third marriage or a second marriage, we kind of have an idea of what didn't work, right? And how we can make it different this time around. So that is an advantage. A disadvantage sometimes is that you've got all these issues that we wouldn't have had to deal with earlier on in life. Failing health, perhaps uh, uh, reduced cognitive ability, um, different level of finances, of course, talking more about saving and, uh, rather than building um, a business. At this point, you know, folks are perhaps living on a fixed income. One of the nuances that can really um, get in the way, and I've seen this in, in one of my clients, is that uh, somebody's ill and their spouse then is not, if they're not married, let me say it again, their partner is not considered next of kin. And so often if there's medical decisions to be made, the adult children have more of a right, or at least they try to, or, or there's some issues there, right? The adult children right. want mom, in, mom in a nursing home, but, but her partner whom she lives with want, wants to take care of her at home. So again, communication um, is always on the, the top of the list as the most important thing, right? Trying to keep everybody's wants, needs, and desires in line and um, taken into account equally. But definitely some different challenges as we approach later in life marriages or partnerships. Finances yeah. also can, can be an issue, I think, when, um, you know, when you decide to partner, do you blend finances? Do you keep things separate? Those are good questions. And especially later in life, I think more and more people uh, you have to have some pretty serious conversations, especially if you're entering into a remarriage or uh, a later in life relationship. It's not the same as uh, someone in their 20s and 30s who are madly in love and getting married for the first time and trying to build. So it's a whole different scenario. And you really categorize some of these issues well. I mean, 
money is an issue, health is an issue, uh, children, uh, stepchildren, these are all issues. And often it's a good idea to consult with an attorney or someone uh, in the area of uh, estate planning and just to make sure that you have everything in order. So these are very good issues. Marty, why don't you tell our viewers a little bit about some of your techniques with couples in therapy and some of the things you do. I mean, I like the garden analogy and some of the things, but tell us more. Well, many folks come to couples counseling pointing at their spouse. If you could fix him, then everything would be better. Or we right. have problems because of her craziness or what have you. So first of all, having couples right off the bat recognize their responsibility, right, in where there may be a failing in the marriage, right? Not necessarily pointing fingers outside, but turning inward to say, what might I be doing that um, leads to difficulties between us, right? What is, is there something in the way that I'm speaking that might rub my partner the wrong way? So first of all, it's getting people to stand in their own skin and to take a look at their behavior in relation to what might be failing in the marriage, because so often they're, they're focused on having the other one change or the other one's behavior <clears throat> be different. So that's first and foremost. We do a lot of communication exercises. Something that is simple um, is uh, you may have heard of I statements. So it would sound something like this. We ask uh, partners to say, I feel, fill in the blank, right? I feel sad, angry, mad. The reason we're starting that way is because we are speaking from our truth, right? It's our emotional state. And therefore, our partner can't get defensive, right? If we start, you always, you never, it's always, right? We, if we start accusatory, that's going to put our partner um, immediately on the defense. So we start in our own skin. I feel, right? You can't argue it's with a feeling about what? Now here, we're not talking about, about when you always leave your toothbrush in the sink, but we're talking about something I feel, let's say, sad about, uh, maybe sad's not, or I, I feel disappointed that uh, continually the dishes are left in the sink. So you're trying to sort of be benign, not attack your partner, right? I that you always leave the dishes in the sink, but I feel disappointed that you uh, that the dishes are always piled up in the sink. The third part of that sentence is I need, right? So it goes I feel about what I need. So in our example, I feel disappointed that the dishes are in the sink. I need when I come home from work to know that I'm gonna be entering a clean kitchen or I need to come home, you know, knowing that, you, you know, things are put away. So we're trying to not attack, we're trying to not criticize, we're trying not to belittle, we're trying not to argue, we're trying to express how we feel. It's good points. I mean, there's one thing I've learned over the years is a. Uh, Happy wife is a happy life. So that's something that's truism also. Uh, we've got maybe a minute, a minute and a half. Are there some final thoughts that you would like to share with our viewers before we sign off? I mean, you've really covered a lot of territory quickly, and we really appreciate it, Marnie. Well, let's go back to the garden example, right? You can't okay. just ignore a garden and expect it to flourish, expect it to grow, right? The soil has to be cultivated. Things need to be watered and fertilized. The point being, a marriage is a living thing. A partnership is a living thing. And it needs to be tuned up, cultivated, cared for, right? There needs to be at times some stopping and replaying. Hey, this isn't working well for me. Um, is, is there a time that we can talk about this? This really is upsetting to me. Um, so recognizing that problems just don't go away right? In fact, sometimes they fester and get worse. And so how can you have a productive, respectful conversation when there's differing opinions? Um, 
you know, with the idea that the marriage needs to be, if you think about gas in your car or your car tuned up, it needs to be cared for just like any other living thing. Nurture. Or nurture. as you said, gas, nurture, don't gaslight. So. Right. Uh, yes. Like car, you know, tuning up your car. You got to spend time working on improving your marriage. Absolutely. Marnie, this has been wonderful. I want to thank you for being our guest on Gracefully Graying. I want to thank our viewers for watching Gracefully Graying. Again, Marnie is with the Rochester Center for Behavioral Medicine. And uh, thank you so much. You're welcome, Henry. Have a beautiful day. You too.